Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. All right, everybody. We all just heard what happened in the news. We have a 60 second window to react before another thing happens in the news. You. Create a hashtag that is scathing, culturally relevant, and hilarious all at the same time. You, remix the footage so that it becomes a meme referenced more than the original source material. You, patrol all news outlets so that when they speak of this day, they call us by name. And you, get someone fired. Someone like, like should I get on LinkedIn? You know what, I fire me. Yeah. Look, we'll give you a quick rundown, but we're not here to convince anyone that Black Twitter exists. If you know, you know. We want to explore why it exists and what happens both online and IRL when culture and connectivity collide. Stay woke. As far as Black Twitter's origins go, here's what we found. In February 2009, about three years after the platform's creation, the term first appeared in Google's search volume index. That just means that someone somewhere tried looking it up enough times that Google started tracking that particular search. In October 2009, Pew Research Center reported that Black Americans use Twitter more than the other demographics polled. And in November 2009, writer Corey Sika published a short blog post titled, What Were Black People Talking About on Twitter Last Night? In it, he revealed his obsession with the unique way Black users use hashtags. The following year, articles from Slate, The Root, with alternating opinions, Gawker, and NPR all take notice of this phenomenon. Across the platform, about 500 million tweets are fired off per day. So how do individual Black people come together to form Black Twitter? Hashtags. That's what made Black Twitter so innovative and disruptive. Its members used hashtags to talk about seemingly random, regular, not time-sensitive stuff with such veracity that it would trend. Since that original Pew Research Center study in 2009, more people have researched what makes the internet such an active place for Black folks. I oftentimes say that, you know, in my sort of research and looking at Black Twitter and young people's use of Twitter, that they move from kind of power users uh, to powerful users, right? And power users, right, are, are people who might use Twitter, right, at an exceptional rate compared to other populations or segments of the population. But powerful is something different, right? Powerful is sort of used in, in, in a way to have social impact. And so in that sense, I think as people begin to understand the potential that social media provides in terms of a, of, a, of a tool for connecting, a tool for building, a tool for communicating, a tool for organizing, that they're beginning to understand, right, how to be powerful and not just power in terms of how they use the technology. Trending topics were usually about current events. But you know you're black if, black moms be like, and late night, you ain't hitting it right, that Corey referenced in his piece were all forms of storytelling as opposed to updates. We wanted to know exactly how one becomes a member of black Twitter. Are there rules or at least consistent practices? So I reached out to my friend Kiana Tipton for help. She has a master's degree in Twitter. Well, actually, my alma mater didn't quite offer a master's in black Twitter, although, Sometimes I tell people <laughs> I have a master's in Black Twitter and nobody's checked me on it, so. Black Twitter is not an actual space and it's also not a homogeneous group where everyone looks the same, everyone talks about the same things and everyone cares about the same things. I think in order to participate in Black Twitter and to be a part of it, you have to have that cultural competency. Essentially, it mirrors in real life conversations that black people are having. So some of those things are community, call and response, that is really common in black language. And of course there's humor. And I think both community and call and response lend itself to that humorous aspect. It's not all fun and games on Twitter. Black Twitter consistently uses hashtag campaigns to organize around a social or political cause. Say Her Name, created in Sandra Bland's honor, highlights the often hidden plight of black women affected by political injustice or police brutality. Mainstream media's tendency to publicize a victim's most stereotypical photos after an unarmed black person is killed sparked If They Gunned Me Down, and of course, Black Lives Matter, which is now an international activist organization. What a Doctor Looks Like empowered black female doctors and med students to take pride in their profession. Black Twitter's hashtag campaigns can also be pointed at a specific person. Mute R. Kelly aims to keep an accused sexual predator from working in show business. 
Me Too, aims to highlight the frequency of sexual violence and harassment and is an example of a black activist initiative becoming widely used throughout the Twitterverse and larger culture. Take a look through Black Boy Joy and you'll find men and boys celebrating themselves and their right to be viewed as happy and carefree in a society that often pegs them as a threat. Search Black Girl Magic and you'll see women and girls celebrating the things that make them special and beautiful. Girls Like Us and Trans is Beautiful, both started by black women, made space for the diverse experiences and expressions of trans people. See, we can be serious. These hashtags can connect us in our loneliest times, but academics have described what it is we're doing when we chime in on Black Moms Be Like. We're performing our racial or ethnic identities. Our fairy godfather, Henry Louis Gates Jr., academically coined the term signifying. It's an act that usually takes place in person, but Dr. Sarah Florini argues that online, in the absence of a physical body, black Twitter users perform their racial identity by using wordplay or references that only those with deep experience-based knowledge of black US culture can recognize. A good example of this is Ask Rachel, where people posed a series of multiple choice questions to stump Rachel Dolezal, as if to say, if you were really black, you'd know this. Signifying is so second nature that it's hard to fake the funk. That's why we can always spot a perpetrator. You know those fake accounts. You know the ones. They got like five tweets from 10 minutes ago and the slang they use is just off. Like Kendrick said, you sound like the feds, homie. We also participate in Black Twitter to create cultural capital. There's a sense of pride and elevated status associated with the ability to effectively execute a culturally significant piece of content, aka keep the retweets coming. I mean, that's why we get so hyped to add our two cents on a popular Black Twitter hashtag. We want to be part of a larger group, gain acceptance, and have our experiences affirmed by peers. And we do this in layers, adding visuals like GIFs, memes, video clips to create one big cultural inside joke. Your cultural capital can reach such viral heights that it should make some financial capital, like these guys. You can giggle at comedian Jabuki Young White's jokes on Twitter and on the TV shows he now writes for and stars in. Author Lovey Ajayi's live tweets during Scandal were legendary. Yes. And the pop culture commentator's first book has been optioned by Shonda Rhimes herself for development into a comedy series. Jay Versace brings joy to millions for free with his videos, and we want his creative genius in more commercial work. <laughs> Right. We'll link to some resources that tackle how black youth culture online is often exploited. I hope to never see a fast food chain tweet on fleek ever again. So we've invited Kiana here to help us analyze our tweets professionally um, hey. because we need to know if we are black twittering correctly and that is your expertise, mm -hmm. right? Yes, this is my dream day. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with AZ. When did you get on Twitter? I think I got on Twitter in 2009. Uh-huh. But um, I just remember that I was just an egg. <laughs> oh, yeah. You didn't uh, have a photo. Yeah, I didn't have a photo. I didn't know. And I, and I wrote, is this thing on? I think I started mine in 2007. And I didn't know what I was doing either. I think you have to have, you have to cultivate that community mm -hmm. and friend group. So it's kind of like a group chat, because oh. until you have that, it's like, I'm talking to myself. Yeah, I didn't get the point. Yeah, so I was really mad about, uh, you know, this college acceptance scandal. Mm -hmm. So I started talking about how I got into college and how it was really hard. Let me tell you something, almost any person of color who's in college or university beat generational layers of instability and po poverty to get there. Even if they were middle class, they were statistically speaking, one mistake away from losing everything. Guys, I was having a moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is intense. And it's 50 a retweets. It How many? Popular. 50. Oh, that's popular? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a call and response element to it. So there's something going on in the news and you are talking about that in a way that a lot of other black people will relate to. And you can see that through how many retweets you got. Mm -hmm. um, and also in this kind of shared experience that other black college students or black people that have gone to college have experienced. Also the thread element, which I find really interesting, 
um, is something that Twitter added several years after creating the platform, kind of to be able to facilitate conversations in a way that mirrors offline conversations. Okay, let's see what my most retweeted tweet is. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's this, so it's actually a retweet. So my most retweeted tweet <laughs> is me retweeting something. Oh my gosh. And it's that Tyra Banks um, like meme. So the person's original tweet was, we want your culture, but you evicted. And so I retweeted wow. it and I was like, wow, That's a poem deep. about Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so oh, people really Oh, so that. people who, oh, and then the first person who wrote back said, and Atlanta, mm -hmm. and Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and Seattle, Seattle. So this is a quote tweet. This mm -hmm. is what we, in the academic Twitter world like to call a quote tweet. Uh -huh. This is Love also it. a newer edition um, mm -hmm. from Twitter. Originally, mm -hmm. they didn't allow you to do this. You could retweet what someone else said or you could add to it, but you couldn't add on on top of that tweet. Uh -huh. So this right. is something that's um, probably within the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's another way that they have changed the actual interface and algorithm of the platform to facilitate conversation, conversations in meaningful ways. But what is funny about this and also kind of like mimics the way that black people have conversations is that you have this tweet that's funny and then it's like you're kind of adding on to it. Yeah. Like, let me make this funnier. So thanks, Kiana, for going down memory lane with yeah, us and exploring our tweets. We will continue to black Twitter to the best of our abilities and not get dragged, hopefully, <laughs> in the future for saying dumb stuff. Who would have known that a social media platform that restricted you to 140 characters would become a vibrant community for so many people? We could be arguing over sugar grits versus the correct ones, or more serious conversations around code switching and workplace etiquette. And when they upgraded to 280 characters, more space for more shenanigans without having to shorten your to you are, like it's an AOL <laughs> chat room. TBT, y'all. Whether it's used to demand political change, help people find community, or just make us cackle uncontrollably, Black Twitter has value. And of course, we're scared of getting dragged by Black Twitter. Ah, uh, did I just delete my tweets from 2010? Possibly. In that way, Black Twitter keeps us responsible, always thinking about the implications of what we say. And if we ever need anything from a laugh to a full-on takedown, we know who to call. <laughs> Let us know if you're a part of Black Twitter and why. Share this video on your Twitter and at us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you to Curiosity Stream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers, including Curiosity Stream originals. For example, they have King, a filmed record, Montgomery to Memphis. The doc uses archival footage of Martin Luther King Jr. But what if we also had his tweets? You can learn more at curiositystream.com slash say it loud. Click here to watch previous episodes of Say It Loud. Click here to watch Roy Wood Jr. deep dive into Black Twitter for The Daily Show. And click here to watch Blavity's hilarious sketch if Black Twitter went on a date with you. <laughs>